happy Sunday. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, just thank you for joining us from wherever you are. If you're at home watching, uh, I hope you get yourself settled, get your coffee, gather your family. I'm very sure that God has a, has a fresh word for us this morning. Um, unfortunately, we cannot meet in person due uh, to several sickness, uh, sicknesses happening around us. I'm also battling really bad sickness myself. Hey, but you know what? Um, I'm very encouraged that our, our God is bigger. Christ is in control. Christ is more powerful than COVID, more powerful than anything in the world. And, you know, the, if the gospel was preached in the New Testament during sicknesses and shipwrecks and, um, and uh, persecutions and even death rows, you know, and I, I'm very sure that um, the gospel must be spread even today in the midst of all this chaos. And I'm just thankful that all of you are tuning in. And if uh, any of us are sick, um, I, I would like to pray for you and let's gather our hearts. Even we cannot be together physically, but we can be united in spirit and let's, let's, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for gathering us this morning heal all of us who are sick, um, bodily sick, or even mentally tired or, or struggling, Lord, I'm praying right now for the Holy Spirit to fill our, each of our house, houses. Um, uh, you are present behind closed doors, and I believe that you will, you will just move mightily this morning, and you will speak to us personally in each and every one of our homes. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So um, let's dive in. Um, so, so this month we are focusing on the book of Acts, uh, which is one of my favorite um, Bible verse. And uh, how many of us are very familiar with the great commandment uh, written in Ma Matthew 28? which says, you know, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them, uh, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of age. So there's a lot of active words happening in this very famous mission. Go, make, you know, uh, baptize, teach. And all of them are great, but um, a lot of us miss uh, this very one important commandment from Jesus that happened before even he, he told us to go. And we can actually find uh, that commandment in Acts, verse, uh, Acts 1 verse 3 to 4. And I'm going to read it to you real quick. Uh, During the 40 days after Jesus suffered and died, he appeared to the apostle from time to time and he proved to them in many, many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Verse 4. Once when he was eating with the disciples, he commanded them. So this is the command before the famous command. He said this, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before, because John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So before you go, you must wait, right? So in the, in the, in the original word, karitso, do not leave means do not depart from and physically do not separate yourself from the presence of God. you got to stay and wait. So wait for what, right? We, we would question why do we have to wait? And Jesus answered right away in Acts 1 verse 8, you got to wait because you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So several times God is telling his disciples, before you go, you got to wait. Luke 24, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. John 16, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I have to go away. For if I do not go away, says Jesus, the helper with the capital H will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So guys, uh, in January, we were talking about clarity, about uh, direction from the Lord. Where, where do we go from here? And first thing first, and it, it is uh, really clear that the instruction in the beginning of 2022 uh, is very simple. It's just to wait, be still, be, be still do not live leave and stay in the presence of God. So I want to title my message today, God's Waiting Room, because 
the truth is, friends, nowadays, the command of waiting itself is actually more difficult to follow than the command of go. You know, because like as Christians, we have that impulse. We have a muscle memory of, of going and making disciples and, and baptizing because we follow God for quite some time now. We kind of know what to say, what to do, and everything becomes a, a, a natural response for us to go. Um, but, but today, the Word of God is very clear for us to actually wait um, and be still before we can go. In our culture today, unfortunately, waiting has had a, a bad reputation, you know, waiting in traffic, waiting in a drop-off pickup line, waiting in a doctor's office. Uh, it is deemed unproductive and a waste of time because, you know, we could have used this time for something else. So nowadays, unfortunately, nobody waits anymore. And when we do wait, we tend to scroll. So if you're waiting for a friend to come in an appointment or a college to enter, uh, 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 or if you're in, a, in, in your office waiting for a meeting to start, how long do you think it takes before you check on your phone? And, um, thankfully, there's a recent study um, conducted by two large universities in Germany and England. And in the study, participants were, were left alone in the waiting room only with their gadgets. And the average, on average, they lasted only 44 seconds before they touched their smartphones. And men could not even manage half of this time with the waiting an average of only 20, 21 seconds uh, before they touched their smartphones. And women average at 57 seconds. Jens Binder from this University of Nottingham said in the press release about this study, this experiment suggests that people are far more attached to these devices than they realize, and it has become second nature to turn to our smartphones when we are left alone with them. What this says is that nowadays, people just don't wait anymore. So if this is what we do collectively as a culture, if we always strive for productivity, filling our waiting time with scrolling time, absorbing more information, making more purchases from Amazon, going from one task list to another, then God's command in the beginning of my sermon today of waiting on him becomes more and more an unfamiliar concept. It becomes more unpopular. It becomes like foreign concept for all of us. It's a lost art of waiting upon the Lord. So today we want to look deeper into it. Like practically, what do we do? Because it's clear that the Bible says you got to wait and we do want to obey God, right? But but how? It's, it's such a vague concept. And um, before I, I, I go there, let me show you something very interesting. In the Blue Bible, uh, Blue Letter Bible website, the Bible study, it says, in this book of Acts that we are studying right now, if you rip that whole Bible out, you will skip from the book of John straight to Romans, right? And you will miss a big chunk of the story because you will see that the gospel was actually spread in the little town of Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem, because Jesus' ministry was around that area only. But when the, there's no book of Acts, you skip right to Romans. Suddenly, suddenly the gospel will spread all over Asia, all over Europe. It was in Rome. It was in, in, in Sicily. It was everywhere. What happened? And it didn't even make sense because at that time, there's no news outlet. There's no social media. There's no, there's no camera that can record the miracle of Jesus. There's no Twitter that can make Jesus viral. You know, there, Jesus has no online followers. There's only fishermen and, and um, regular villagers that follow Jesus every day and they're not even educated. And how did the gospel spread that fast, that vast uh, geographically in such a uh, short period of time? And the answer apparently is in that book of Acts, the missing book of Acts. That's why we have that in the middle of John and Rome, Romans. Because before that effective ministry happened, because that effective spread of the gospel, miracle, signs and wonder happened, there was... A key there was an act of active waiting in Acts chapter 1 and 2 when specifically it says that after Jesus went up to heaven after Jesus went up to, to heaven the disciples went into a room and wait 
Acts chapter, Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like roaring of the mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. So they were actively waiting before all of that breakthrough and all of that explosion happened. So friends, if waiting is such a powerful act, then before we go, we must wait. <laughs> and before we give, we must receive. So let's dive in, into that. Um, waiting on God, let's make it practical. How, we do, how do we do it every day in our daily busy schedule that we have to prepare meals and um, you know, go to work, we have eight to five, we have meetings to attend, we have ministry to do. You know, don't get it backwards because Jesus, he always act on waiting first on his father and then out of his overflow, he minister. He never have it backwards where we're filling our schedule with ministry. And then if we have our an extra time, then we spend, spend time with God. It doesn't work that way because spiritual things need to be done in a spiritual way. And we cannot move forward without the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to make a really simple acronym for you guys. So to make it very practical, how to wait on God in this very busy and productive culture that we're living in right now, make room. First word that we, I want to focus on is make, okay? So because if we want to meet with somebody, especially somebody important, we got to make the appointment. We actually have to intentionally carve up time to meet with that person. Hey, dude, do you want to meet up for coffee? Are you free tomorrow? Are you free on Monday? Can we meet up at the town center or the mall? Because I want to talk to you. So we actually have to make appointment with God. So if you make appointment with a brother or sister in Christ or with your pastor, what do you do? You will ask two questions. First of all, can you meet me tomorrow? And he will ask where, right? There's a specific location for it because there's, it's a big city. You don't know where you cannot just randomly meet them and have a, have a productive talk, right? So first question you got to ask is where, and then second, okay, I'll meet me at the mall. And they would ask what time, <laughs> because then there's going to be specific, other than a specific location, there's going to be specific time for it. So for us to make room and to wait for God, there's got to be an active intentionality on our part to carve out specific time and location to meet with Jesus. So I'm going to read to you a few patterns that I found in the Bible on how Jesus did it uh, in the past. Because if you want to learn effective ministry, what other person is better to learn than Jesus? Matthew 14, verse 23. After Jesus has sent the crowds away, Jesus went out to the mountain by himself, location, mountain, to pray. And when it was the evening time, he was there alone. Luke 6, verse 12. It was at this time that Jesus went off to the mountain again to pray, and he spent the whole night time in a prayer to God. Again, specific locations, plus specific time. Mark 1 verse 35, in the early morning when it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went away to a secluded place, and he was praying there. Luke 5 verse 16, but Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness to pray. And lastly, Matthew 26 36, and then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said that the disciples sit here while I go over there and pray. So Jesus carved out a specific time and location to be alone with his father because, hey guys, let's be real. I think it's hard for us to be intimate with somebody if there's a third person in the room, right? Or we're in public place. We cannot spill our hearts. We cannot talk deeply. Uh, even with our spouses, you know, we, if, if you want to have that quiet, intimate moment with the Lord, then you got to be alone with him. <laughs> There's no way that you can do it in public place. That's why making an appointment with him is very, very crucial. Matthew 6 verse 5 says, when you pray, don't be like those hypocrites who love to pray publicly on strict corners and in synagogues where everybody can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. 
Isn't it interesting that Jesus always go to the mountains and wilderness? <laughs> and we always think that we have to be in our boring room to speak with Jesus. No, go hiking, you know, go to the lake, um, go fishing. Um, make it intentional for you to hear from the Lord and to pray to Him. We are living in the Pacific Northwest, you guys. Just pick an easy trail. Okay, don't go off by yourself. You know, climbing eight, you know, like like hundreds of feet of mountains trail. Don't do that. Just do an easy trail, um, um, neighborhood trail, or anything, and think of when is the last when was the last time god really speak to you in a fresh way it could be nature it could be your own room it could be in the coffee shop it could be when you were playing uh, instrument like by yourself worshiping in your room you know whatever it is visit that place often because jesus he is not going to stood you up <laughs> he's going to show up in that appointment ready for fresh words for you he's he's not going to leave you hanging in fact, he's probably going to be early, way early, waiting for you to show up in that appointment. And, and take time to have that uninterrupted time with the Lord. And um, after you make room, I'm going to make an acronyms of room, right? R, you got to rent and you will receive. So there's nothing holy about going to that room and what happened behind that closed door or in that trail. You rant, you know, just be raw to the Lord and just be honest. Um, my favorite verse of all time is Habakkuk. And I know I preach about this before, but I always come back to this prophet to see how raw he was in his relationship with God. Because in Habakkuk 2, there was a crisis happening in that city. And the way Habakkuk interact with God, he didn't start with, oh, Lord of heavens, you know, uh, mighty God. Um, Yahweh and all that Christian holy terms, he actually came to God with a complaint, which is interesting because um, you cannot, God cannot heal what you hide. And every time Habakkuk uh, come to the Lord, there was a crisis happening at, at that time because the Babylonians were um, attacking that city. And when the crisis happened, Habakkuk came to the Lord with all raw, rawness and honesty. How long, O oh Lord, my, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see this evil deeds? Must I forever wear this mask? Must I forever live in this pandemic? Lord, how long? You know, I'm sick of the terms like social distancing and Omicron and all that stuff. How long will this end? So you come to God spilling with the, with the rent. Um, like you meet a doctor, you, you need to be honest of your condition. If not, they will not cure you um, properly, right? And then after that, um, you will receive. And this is the most powerful thing. What will we receive in our time alone with God? First of all, we will receive His presence. And guys, there's nothing better than receiving the presence of the Lord. Amen. His presence is better than life itself. He will meet you. And once he meet you, he will breathe peace unto you. I'm going to read you from John 20. And that is the time where all of the disciples were uh, locked together in a room behind closed doors again. And Jesus was suddenly, Jesus appeared in that room. And how many of us today are locked behind clo closed doors because we are either quarantining or we're social distancing from our community and this is the word of the Lord for you today. That Sunday, when the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. And Jesus said, peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hand. And the minute the presence of God came, his disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So friends, today, when we are alone in our, our house and on lockdown 2.0, may Jesus stood among us, breathe unto us peace and his presence and say, Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. As we, before we go, before we give, we have to receive. Amen. Number two, after we receive, we rent and we receive, we observe, we listen closely of what he got to say. Because friends, 
in an appointment when you're meeting with someone, there's no way you only have a one-way conversation. You want to listen to what he got to say. So Jesus has fresh words for you, for us to hear every day. Psalm 25 said, show me the right path, Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. And after Habakkuk ran about his situation to God, he listened intently to what God has to say. Habakkuk 1 verse 5 says, instantly the Lord replied, look around at all the nations, look and be amazed for I am doing something in your own day, something you would not believe even if someone told you about it. God is doing a new thing among us. If you're by yourself today and you don't remember anything that I said today, read Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. I know Irma shared this during a worship leading, the first beginning of, of this month, and that really spoke to me because the Lord says, Isaiah 43, oh wow, just one word from the Lord will change everything. One word. When you go through the waters, friends, I will be with you, says the Lord. For you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up and the flames will not consume you from I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. And even that, verse 18, forget all that good things. It is nothing compared to what I'm about to do, for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Did you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Amen. Observe and listen to what God has to say about our, our specific situation. And Habakkuk 2 verse 2 is also my favorite verse. After God spoke, Habakkuk got another instruction from God. He said, God says to him, write down my answer, God's answer plainly on tablets so that they can carry the correct message to others. And friends, this is why I have this. Like my kids were asking me, what do I want for Christmas? And this is all I want for Christmas. It's just a journal and pans, new set of pans. And my daughter got me all this taps for the Bible. So it's easier for her aging mom to find the verses in the Bible. And that's all I want because I want to write down everything that I hear from the Lord because that changed everything. Some of us are hearing the news and scrolling the information more than we hear from our Lord. And and that needs to change. And we have to hear and observe what the Lord has to say. So make appointment, show up, rent, be honest about your situation, receive his presence, his peace, observe his words. And the third one is obey. So we, after we listen, we, we know the word of God. You just got to do it instantly. We cannot um, respond or react based on our own wisdom anymore. And this year is... It's probably the year where all of our plans, all of our wisdom, all of our strength and strategy needs to end. Because the way God is going to build his kingdom is with his methods, not ours, with his agenda, not our agenda. So if you see firefighters, I'm so, me and my husband, we are so fascinated in how the, the firehouse operates. We are obsessed with this movie, 911. Um, it's how the LAPD, L L LA fire department operate. So what happened is the funny thing is that most of their time in the firehouse is spent waiting for an order. They don't really spring into action out of impulse, out of needs. They actually waited. So they're in the firehouse cooking, fellowshipping, you know, waiting. And when a call happened, there's a specific assignment for a specific fire firehouse and they need to fulfill that, that assignment specifically. Because see, friends, if you see a need on the news and then all this firefighter act out of impulse, you know, like, I'm just going to help, then there's going to be more chaos happening because there's going to be power struggles and um, fights and arguments because you are not assigned for it at the first place. So how many of us Christians are acting based on our muscle memory because we follow God for 20 years? We know how the ministry is run. We know how this uh, is supposed to be done in the past. So we give advice, we give, uh, we put, we spring into action out of our muscle memory, not out of the wisdom from the Holy Spirit. And that create more chaos. And that is exactly why that couldn't happen. We have to wait for the specific instruction from the Lord. And then we spring into action. Amen. 
we have to trust and obey because the fact is obedi- uh, waiting is an act of obedience and trust that he got it. He got it. It's not our thing. It's not our way. It's his way. So lastly, when after we make room, we, we rent, we receive, we write it uh, down on a tablet on your way out. Remember, every time you make an appointment with your doctor, he would say to you, on your way out, make another appointment. Don't forget to set a date for another appointment. So M is for make, making another appointment with God. Because friends, this is a journey. This is not a one-time deal. We cannot just listen, hear from the Lord one time, and then it's good for the rest of the year. It doesn't work that way. We get to come back to that place of private solitude again with the Father and really put our feet under his uh, put ourselves under his feet and be be like Mary and listen intently of what he got to say about our situation about about our our assignments our purpose and from there the next season of your life is going to be way more powerful and more fruitful than the last amen make room make an appointment and don't forget on your way out make another appointment with god amen so i'm gonna uh close with prayers um and i'm gonna um just share with you a practical testimony on on how do we wait on the lord uh usually in the beginning of the year we uh, we gather our kids around the table and say hey you know what guys uh we're gonna practice today waiting on god and and listen to what he got to say about our year Right? So each of, of them get a journal, they have, each have a pen. And sometimes we ask God specific questions like, um, what do you want me to do this year? Or how do you see me? And the craziest thing is that God speaks even to our children. God speaks in a specific vision, specific words, specific um, word of God, the Bible that they could turn to. And the first thing we have to teach um, to to us too and to our children is to discern the voice of God, the voice of the enemy, and our own voice. Because the minute they can differentiate that, then they can hear more clearly from God. God's voice is uplifting, it's always encouraging, it's always leading you back to repentance. It's full of kindness, full of compassion. It will speak purpose on you. The enemy's voice, it will condemn you. It will make you feel worse about yourself. It will just distract you and um, it will defy you. Uh, It doesn't bring peace. So that's the voice of the enemy. And the voice of your own self is a result of the voice of the enemy. It's going to be more self-centered. It's like, I'm so bad. I'm such a bad parent. How could this happen? I'm such a bad friend. I don't have a lot of friends to begin with. And a lot of self-pity that is self-centered. You got to put silence, um, put into silent uh, mode into those voices, the voice of the enemy and the voice of yourself, because those are not the truth. And put God's voice front and center in our life one more time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for encouraging us to make appointments with you and be intentional about our, our private time with you. Let us uh, Give us wisdom to carve out time, carve out um, specific locations to meet with you, Lord, um, and just give us fresh manna every day. Uh, speak to us because we cannot move forward without the presence, the peace, and the power from the Holy Spirit. And this is, we declare that today is where our agenda our own strength and our own power ends and this is where you step in and you begin we love you jesus speak to us even more clearly in jesus mighty name we pray amen happy sunday i hope to see you next week